It's no secret that Jiro has been the most winning character throughout the My Hero Academia Spotlight format. She has been strong in every single meta, and at last year's World Championship, we saw 8 of the 32 players play Jiro, and Jiro ended up taking second place, nearly taking down the entire event. However, in three months, we are going to be saying goodbye to this character and all of My Hero Academia set one. In late February, once Yu Hakusho drops, uh, Jiro and set one will rotate out of the main competitive format of Universus, which is going to be standard format going forward. Now, we'll still have MHA only format, but it'll be largely relegated to side events. At least that's what I expect. And that standard format will take over as the main competitive format and Jiro will be no longer. So this next three months is Jiro's last stand and she is going to make it count because I don't think it's hyperbole to say that Jetburn revolutionizes the deck builds of Jiro in some really cool and unique ways. So much so that I'm considering playing Jiro at the HLC in February and I never would have expected myself to become a Jiro player but these new cards that she gets are really, really cool. So what I want to look into today is how Jetburn revolutionizes Jiro and then some early deck builds that I have for this character and that I've been testing over the last week or so. But before we get into all that, let's rewind the clock and set the stage. Let's rewind all the way back, if you can remember, all the way back to October of 2023, the Pro Hero Nationals are upon us and we're all getting ready because the Nationals are the biggest event of the year. This is the only way other than the LCQ to get your World's Championship invite. And so everybody is expecting all the players to bring their A game. And because of this, we're expecting Jiro to be out in numbers. A lot of other major players in the game and content creators, including myself, were predicting this. I even predicted that the good Jiro list running Cannon Blast and the Future Is Now combo would be the number one deck list that you had to prepare for to get ready for Nationals. But then something interesting happened. At the National level events, Jiro vanished. Only three of the top 56 um, top cut lists were Jiro. Instead, we continued to see Mirio, Overhaul, uh, Eraserhead, Tokoyami, Amajiki. We continued to see these other characters top more than Jiro, and we also saw them just get played a lot more than Jiro. So the question has to be asked, what happened to Jiro at Nationals? Before I answer that question, let's just consider that we have a Thanksgiving feast before us, or at least to answer this question. Because today was Thanksgiving, by the time you're watching this, it's probably Black Friday. But let's suppose we have all of these uh, wonderful foods in front of us, and let's just compare them to my hero characters in the trading card game. I think it would go something like this. You'd have to say the turkey and ham are Mirio and Overhaul. Uh, I put Overhaul as the ham because maybe that's a little more adventurous, uh, but the turkey is definitely uh, the main star of the show in my opinion. Uh, Amajiki as like the pies, like he's a unique character out there on Undaunted Raid. Mimic is the macaroni and cheese. At least I think that's macaroni and cheese. But uh, everybody enjoys it. It's a lot of fun to play. And then even like Eraserhead, No Moon, Tokoyami, and Shoto, they were all getting new things in the latest set. Like Eraserhead is getting repeated 100% smash, rejuvenating smash, Tokoyami's getting manifest, Nomu's getting like uh, calorie counter, for example. So there's new cards to play with in all of these characters. And then where is Jiro? Well, Jiro is like the dinner rolls, except not these amazing, buttery, warm, fresh rolls. Jiro's like uh, stale, lukewarm rolls that somebody just bought from the store and brought to the party. You know, it's not bad. You don't dislike it but you're also not just craving more of these dinner rolls. They're just kind of bland and they're there. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's look at some of the builds of Jiro. And all of these builds are were made by players that I really respect and I think they're really good at the game. And I'm not saying that this means Jiro is not a fun character. I'm just saying, let's look at these deck builds of Jiro and see how many of these cards are like set one and set two cards and how many of these have been cards released in the last year. And we'll realize that like 90% of Jiro's list is 
old cards. So like here, this whole entire attack lineup, this is all set one cards. Most everything here is set one and set two, except for save a million strike, which is pretty cool. Combined with futures now. Um, the only non-set one card is double jab pummel, which is set two. Over here, spiral wave surge was pretty interesting. I liked this uh, this kind of um, pairing spiral wave surge with double jab pummel. I thought that was a pretty cool iteration on Jiro. But overall, we can kind of see that this character is still mainly dependent on the set one and set two cards. And so there just hasn't been a ton of innovation with Jiro lately. I don't think it was all just because uh, Jiro can feel kind of bland and stale at this point. I think it's also that uh, Jiro, Jiro had a bad Mirio matchup, especially like Cannon Blast Jiro, where Mirio can just zero out something. And then even like uh, Air Jiro, Mirio's playing tons of capture evildoers and he's going to be stealing your momentum and then you can't do the sound waves chain thing that you want to do. So there was a bad matchup there and we did expect tons of Mirio to be out there. So I think that might have scared some Jiro players off. But I think overall what really happened is people just didn't want to play Jiro. And if you have the option of playing Overhaul, Mirio, Amajiki, these new characters that just come out in Undaunted Raid and they were really putting up results, like why wouldn't you just keep playing those new fun characters rather than going back to the uh, kind of stale set one character? So that is my working theory on what happened to Jiro. It's just that in terms of Thanksgiving food, she's like just uh, a uh, just a dinner roll. Which, hey, if that's your thing, that's your thing, right? Some people just love the dinner roll. But enter Jetburn. Jetburn revolutionizes Jiro deck builds. Uh, on the air symbol, is definitely highlighted by Falling Skies. A four difficulty charge attack, three high five, one low block. It's going to get plus one speed and plus one damage for every printed high in the card pool, including itself. So just on its own, it's going to be a four high six. If it has one other high attack in the card pool, it's going to be a 5 high 7. 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I love um, when an attack gets 3 stats per difficulty ratio. At that point, I'll play that attack whether or not it has any cool abilities. I just want those awesome stats. So it's a very well statted card, but it also gets this top enhance. This attack gains throw no more attacks can be played this turn. So it is gated a little bit. That's a first enhance, no more attacks. But Jiro's adding the damage before the enhance step. She's adding it as a response. So if you're playing this as like the fifth card in your card pool and everything's a high, you can respond for five damage. You can then first enhance, make it a throw, and then you can give it the damage because it doesn't say non-throw attack. So pretty soon you have this eight high for 15 damage falling skies. This is nuts. I kind of think this probably takes the place of Indiscriminate Shock in Air Jiro builds. Uh, it's a four diff instead of a five diff. Indiscriminate Shock is only three speed, but this is gonna get to be like seven or eight speed. It's also gonna get to the same damage output. We're gonna be getting to like 12 to 15 damage. It's also a low block, except it's a one low block instead of a two low block. And it's a much better poke attack than Indiscriminate Shock because in the early turns, we can just play this, give it throw, and then we're going to be getting momentum for sound waves chains. So Falling Skies does everything that Air Jiro wants. It's a great poke early on. It's a great finisher. Later on, a very, very versatile attack with solid stats. But it's not just Falling Skies that Air Jiro gets. We're getting quick response to give our high attacks to speed. We're getting velocity rush as this four high four echo attack. This can feel really strong as like, a, a different attack to spend momentum on other than sound waves. If you play this as like your second attack, then it's going to be a four high six, and then we can just play it again. Jiro doesn't really care that it's gonna flip face down because Jiro just gives damage based on cards in the card pool, and we're not really playing a ton of combo attacks other than double jab pummel. So it's not a big deal that it goes face down. Also, you can zero gravity lift and put it into your momentum before it flips. There's some cool things there. I really like Velocity Rush. Uh, we get like waitlist to ready a face down. As a one diff foundation, we get flustered, which I think is just an incredible spam foundation where if we have a charge attack in your card pool, which we always will, we can either flip to discard arrival momentum or to draw a card. Jiro loves flip to draw because she can look at the top two cards of her deck, put the attack on top, foundation on bottom, flip a foundation and draw that attack. 
or if you're playing someone who's really dependent on their momentum, you can flip to make them discard, you know, and you get to selectively discard it. So you're playing Shigaraki three and they just put a masterminding in their momentum, flip this, discard the masterminding. You're playing Mirio and they're gonna use their momentum to zero out something, flip this and get rid of their one momentum. Uh, very, very versatile card, love flustered. But other than that, we also get Dramatic Slash, both the good, well, all of her symbols get Dramatic Slash. There's a charge weapon, so you're gonna be able to respond for both the speed and the damage. You're gonna to get to discard momentum and build an asset. We're getting this new cool asset on the air symbol, Air Force Gloves, which if your attack doesn't have stun one, you can give it stun one. This asset also checks as six, which is gonna be really important for like sound waves chains. We can just pick up Air Force Gloves. So no longer do you have to play like Arrogant Disposition um, as your six check, which is only useful against punch decks. Now we can put in Air Force Gloves instead. Kind of a cool, unique aspect there. We're also getting incompatible quirks where we can ready it. Airy Smiles is some great disruption piece. Like if you're playing Ryukyu, you know, her, her uh, ultra rare dragon impact, it's a too high attack. So block it with Airy Smiles and force her to play a non-attack next. Uh, quirk Expertise to make something high, either on offense for quirk, for quirk response, or quick response, not quirk, quick response or on defense just to make something high, and then like block with airy smiles or double jab pummel or electric jolt, you know, all those wonderful high blocks that you have. So tons of support coming on the air symbol, definitely falling skies as the headliner though. Now let's go to the good symbol because the good symbol got even more cool support, I think, than the air symbol. Once again, we're seeing velocity rush, airy smiles, and dramatic slash, all of these share the good symbol, but now we're getting fierce wings. And this is so powerful in Jiro. I'm kind of surprised this has Hawk's face on it instead of Jiro. Because first, you can remove this and add a three difficulty or less card to your hand. Well, that could be specialized sound waves on offense. That could be um, save a million strike on defense to block and put it into your momentum. That could be the future is now. Say you have a cannon blast in your hand, but you don't have the futures now. You can go grab futures now. There's so many, and, and on defense, it can just be an Omni block. And then if they commit you, you can just build whatever you want. Like this is an insane card. If you draw a Fierce Wings and you have a few, like let's say you have a momentum and you draw a Fierce Wings, you'll say, okay, I'll go grab Sound Waves. Now you Sound Waves. Now you'll use that momentum and maybe you can stack your deck with like Tasty Riff and then draw your Tasty Riff. And now that one Fierce Wings turn into a Sound Waves and a Tasty Riff. How nuts is that? I love Fierce Wings. Um, one cool thing you can do with Dramatic Slash that you couldn't do on the air symbol is build in UA High. You can then blow up UA High to add an ally card to your, from your discard pile to your hand. And we get this really cool new ally card, Tasty Riff. Five high three, it's a charge attack, ally in tech and deadlock powerful seven. Deadlock powerful seven. Uh, if it deals damage, you're gonna draw three cards. That's insane. And you also get to basically build a zero difficulty foundation. If like a Tasty Riff had already done damage previously in the game and you have three applause counters, you could build like a two difficulty foundation. So at worst, it builds a zero diff. And then if it deals damage, it's gonna draw three. It's pretty much going to force a block. Otherwise, you're going to find even more gas. Also, we're getting surprising skill as a nice zero difficulty foundation. Um, and always cool, which I think is actually a really, really needed tech piece for good Jiro. Remember how I said Mirio was a bad matchup because they can zero out your cannon blast? Well, with always cool, we get this response, destroy after an attack is played, its damage cannot be modified. So what we can do is play our own attack, like uh, capture, we can do futures now into like capture net or cannon blast. We can then respond for the damage and then we can respond always cool. Hey, this damage can't be modified. Now this is 10 damage, deal with it. <laughs> you know, like, okay, we're not going to get the enhances on Cannon Blast, but we're still going to make it huge. And Mirio or Nomu, all of these like damage reducing characters are just going to have to deal with it. Also, this card feels really nice for foundation ramp early on, something the good symbol really excels at. We already going to have like Back Alley Haymaker and Tasty Rift building in our zero deaths. And now always cool. We can add it to our card pool and build the top two cards of our deck face down. So early in the game, you might want this for foundation ramp. Late in the game, you can use it on defense to, you know, if you're facing like, uh, for example, like Detroit Smash All Might One, you know, and they and they play their uh, Detroit Smash, you can uh, respond, destroy always cool and say, hey, you can't modify the damage of that attack. So it's solid defense, it's solid on offense, and it's solid early in the game as foundation ramp. Really, really needed tech piece 
in my opinion. So both the good and air symbols getting a lot of new cool support. I really don't know about the all symbol. I didn't take time and look because everybody really just plays um, good and air Jiro. Although it might be interesting to see if there's some sort of all build out there. I really just haven't explored it yet. So with this new tech support, let's see what kind of decks I've been building and play testing. If I jump over to here, by the way, you can always find me on UVS Ultra. I keep all of my decks public for the most part. Just go ahead and click into my HLC decks folder and you can see like the decks that I've been testing as potential uh, decks for me to play at the HLC. Some of these are very, very rough drafts like this evil Shigaraki list is kind of all over the place, but I'm getting uh, away from the main point, which is Jiro. So here's my Air Jiro list. You can see I'm playing mostly highs with sound waves, Comet, Falling Skies, and Zero Gravity left, and I'm pairing these with Quick Response to make them super fast. And then, um, yeah, so we got the 4X sound waves. We have the 4X Home Run Comet, which is Charge Weapon. You're going to get it on both. You can also get a momentum. You can either use that for like a massive powerful. You can get it like powerful six, powerful five, and use that there. Or you can just use this early to get your momentum so that you can do a cool sound waves chain. You can use Falling Skies early just to get momentum and make it a throw. You can use it late as your finisher move. Again, in my thinking, this kind of takes the place of indiscriminate shock. I'm not sure how accurate I am there, though. But this is a very like uh, high attack tribal deck uh, based around quick response. The only mid attacks I have in here is double jab pummel, which I think is kind of necessary to allow yourself to string out. And then if your opponent blocks it, you're going to get to draw two and discard two. The cool thing about this deck is quick response and uh, feeling cute are going to make everything so fast that the only attack your rival can block is double jab pummel. And then because they block it, you say, thank you very much. I'll draw two cards and maybe draw into some more gas. And now you have a card in your card pool, giving my next attacks all pseudo one speed. So I think this card, and it's just got really, really solid deadlock and it's a one high block. Uh, I threw in one copy of Jolt. This used to be a velocity rush, but I liked the velocity rush a lot more in my good symbol Jiro deck than my air Jiro deck. And so I just threw in an electric Jolt. I'm, I'm not sure if that's gonna stay there or if I'm gonna switch it out for something else. Maybe I'll take like Pummel to a three put Jolt to a two, or maybe just like take out zero grab lift. I'm really not sure, but I, I like zero grab lift for the high attack tribal kind of deck. And then I'm also running 4X Flustered and 4X Destined. This is so we can always draw that attack if we see it on top of our deck and just really good uh, interaction with our rival to discard their momentum. We already talked about that. Latent skill to dig deeper. Uh, I really like to use combat decisions as the six check. I think this foundation is actually sneaky, very, very strong. It's got some solid deadlock, it's a low block, and it says if your rivals play three or more attacks, they commit a foundation. That can, you know, feel really nice against like Ryukyu, for example. Maybe this is the only thing that saves you, is just committing one foundation, and that just buys you the time that you need to find lethal, because you are always able to find lethal as Air Jiro. So all in all, this is a 50 card deck, uh, got pretty even, block zones, 19 attacks. That's a pretty aggressive attack ratio, but this is a pretty aggressive deck. Jiro doesn't really play defense. You know, she plays some, we get like some specialist to sound, um, you know, release, like there's some defense here, but there's not a ton. Also uh, seizing the advantage to give some speed and flip their, uh, their best thing. So that is it for my air Jiro build, but what I've really, really been enjoying playing lately is good Jiro. I've been having a lot more fun on this build than on the air list, and that's purely because of Fierce Wings. This card is so cool and fun to play with. Uh, to go and grab the Specialized Sound Waves, the Save a Million Strike, the Future is now. What I think is also a hidden benefit of Fierce Wings is it allows us to not have to play like four Sound Waves. Like we can take Sound Waves down to a three and still feel really comfortable because if we draw Fierce Wings, we can always go and grab it when we need it. And we can also take Futures Now down to a two. We don't have to play like three or four save a million strike. Two is fine. You can maybe even take this down to a one and just hope that it's in your discard pile when you need it. I kind of find two to be the sweet spot. So we don't need to play as many of these cards because they're able to be picked up by Fierce Wings. Fierce Wings always gets us what we want when we need it. We needed the Futures Now and not Sound Waves. We'll go and grab it. 
or we can even go grab sound waves if we have momentum and then we can use sound waves to grab futures now or we can use sound waves to go grab tasty riff like there's some really cool stuff here and because we were able to take sound waves down from a four to a three we got some room for some more two checks and we can run two copies of tasty riff this attack has been doing really well like really really well in my testing i've been surprised by that i've also thrown in two copies of velocity rush uh, as just something else to do with our momentum um, we got the back alley haymaker and of course we have our finishers uh, create capture net as a weapon in charge and cannon blast as a weapon in charge on the foundations the foundations look pretty similar to the other one um, using combat decisions and bonds of friendship as my six checks and always cool uh, which i think is a a, a huge benefit to good gyro over air gyro and i'm using instead of flustered i'm using the big three as my secondary draw outlet to pick up an attack on top of our deck I like flustered a lot more that's a benefit of air gyro to good gyro uh, because big three we have to wait for three attacks to be in our card pool but again i'm being pretty aggressive on my attack count here this is 20 attacks in a 55 card deck we gear a little more towards high blocks but once again you can see i'm going uh, pretty aggressive on my attack count and that's just because i want to be aggressive both of these lists want to win the game very very early on before our opponent has the tools they need in their stage to actually survive. So this is where I'm at with both of my deck builds. I'm sure those are going to change a ton. If you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them in the comments below, or feel free to go ahead and post a link to your Jiro list because I really would be interested in looking at it and using it to help my builds as I go along. And I'm definitely going to be looking forward to these um, Top Cut Jiro deck builds from the December from the uh, event next weekend I am positive that Jiro is going to see at least one or two decks in top cuts so I'm going to be very interested to see uh, first of all what symbol makes it and then what their attack lineup was like when they do make it and how many fierce wings were they playing if they were on the good symbol so that's going to do it for this video Jiro has three months left to terrorize us and I think she's going to do it to the maximum uh, to quote Dylan Thomas, do not go gentle into that good night, but rage, rage against the dying of the light. Uh, you know, she has all the tools at her disposal now. She is more powerful than ever, and I think more fun than ever and more interesting than ever. All right, that is going to do it for me. Again, you're probably watching this on Black Friday. I saw Rochester CCG was running a pretty sweet Black Friday deal. Like if you spend 100 bucks, they're sending you that Deku 2 promo that you could only get in the board game. If you spend like 150, they're sending you a play mat. 200, they're also going to send you a box of Heroes Clash. That's a pretty good deal. I bet your local game store is also running some pretty sweet deals. I know mine is. So Black Friday, it's a great time to go and get some money and spend it on cardboard because there is nothing else better to spend your money on than sweet, sweet cardboard. You can even pull a Chrome Rare. All right, that's going to do it for me. I'll see you guys next time.